Endocapsular tension rings are intraocular devices used to stabilize the capsular back of the lens during modern cataract surgery. Indications to implant a capsular tension ring are related to the detection of weak or missing sonules. Pseudo-exfoliation syndrome, phacodonesis, high myopia, ocular trauma, previous intraocular surgery are all conditions where the use of a capsular tension ring may be considered preoperatively. Detection of sonular problems during surgery, evidenced by excessive lens movement or by direct visualization of a loosening capsular equator, may be successfully handled by opportune implantation of a capsular tension ring. Insertion of capsular tension rings may be performed using fine forceps and hooks. These grasp the ring by the terminal eyelets or ring body and deal it in through the capsular opening. Implantation may alternatively be performed using a capsular ring inserter. The extended ring lying inside the inserter tube is delivered within the capsular bag by the action of a plunger. Regardless of the method of insertion, the ring slides into its final position at the inner equatorial wall of the capsular bag, relieving tension to the sonules during surgery. Late occurring capsulophimosis is also prevented. While using any of the current methods for insertion for capsular tension rings, some observations can be made. There is an initial point of contact between the leading portion of the ring and the inner equatorial wall of the lens capsule. Sometimes the angle of this contact may be steep enough to damage a weak capsule. Equatorial rupture of the capsular bag during this maneuver may mean inadvertent implantation of the capsular ring into the vitreous cavity with or without damage to the peripheral retina. After the initial contact between the capsular ring and the peripheral capsule, the ring is forced to slide circularly following the inner equatorial wall of the lens capsule. Capsular folds from a loose sonule may promote entrapment of the ring and extension of a sonar damage during insertion. During ring insertion, it would be desirable to eliminate the single point focal contact between the leading portion of the ring and the capsule periphery. It would also be desirable to eliminate the sliding of the ring around the capsule equator into position. With these purposes in mind, we developed a novel endocapsular tension ring concept that can totally eliminate these unwanted steps during ring insertion. A plurality of eyelets were added to the capsular ring body at the inner aspect of the ring loop. Prototypes were manufactured under our specification by Morcher from Germany and labeled Model C19. These prototypes were first released as non-sterile samples of the endocapsular tension ring for inspection and in vitro experimental surgery. Later, we could count with sterile samples packaged and labeled under medical device standards for human use. We obtained approval from the Ethics Committee of our institution before proceeding with limited human testing. The new design allows insertion of the capsular tension ring in the conventional manner using manipulators or plunger-based inserters. Furthermore, the newly introduced intermediate eyelets can be used to facilitate insertion of the ring in situations where pinpoint contact between the ring and the capsule wants to be avoided. For example, the ring can be initially placed in the anterior chamber and then easily transferred to the capsular bag using two rotators, avoiding single point contact in delicate zones. With this novel design, we can have a ring that circularly expands within the bag, totally eliminating pinpoint contact zones during insertion. A tensing cord has been passed through each eyelet from one end to the other and back again. Tensing this cord produces an inward bending of the arcs of the ring loop located between the eyelets that serve as cord anchoring points. The ring remains as an open loop as the cord never crosses between the terminal eyelets. In this way, the ring can be dealed into the anterior chamber and into the capsular bag in its reduced state. Once the ring has been placed in a convenient location, the tensing cord is released allowing the capsular tension ring to expand into its final position. An 11-0 nylon suture has been used as the tensing cord material to facilitate cord removal by pulling from one end. Alternatively, a custom-designed endocapsular tension ring inserter can be used. 
This inserter must be designed to exert a variable calculated tension over the tensing cord during plunger travel. In this way, the ring can be delivered within the capsular bag in a reduced diameter and then allowed to expand. The new ring design allows to use the combined action of a hook and of a specially designed inserter. We have named this the Triserter method. This bimanual technique helps to transfer the capsular ring into the capsular bag without any rotation or sliding. Compression forces over the ring loop and over the anterior capsule are limited. We have determined that the PMMA material used by Morcher to build the ring samples possesses high flexibility and excellent memory. We can tense the cord and reduce the diameter of the capsular ring well under the diameter of a standard capsular axis for several minutes without breaking the loop segments. This novel method for capsular tension ring insertion could be valuable for use with modified tension rings. For example, the Sioni modified endocapsular tension ring can have one or two intermediate extensions for capsular fixation to the scleral wall. This ring is used in situations of extreme sonular weakness and thus requires a very delicate implantation. The addition of intermediate eyelets could help to reduce the Sioni ring diameter during insertion, expediting the procedure and enhancing safety. The use of our new method of endocapsular tension ring insertion may allow to modify the structural properties of capsular tension rings, building stiffer or wider loop sections that may not be implantable using conventional procedures because of the rigidity of the design. Threading a cord through each eyelet during surgery is time-consuming, so the pulling cord and the capsular tension ring should be provided pre-packaged together and ready for use. More research has still to be done to provide an easy-to-use cord locking and ring delivery system. The injector has still to be refined to deliver the ring in a calculated reduced diameter, aiding to release the cord and to remove it in a simple and safe maneuver. The eyelets can be improved. The cord material could be improved, for example, to avoid the need of removal at all, using a biocompatible or still better, a biodegradable material. In summary, we are presenting a new structure and method of implantation of endocapsular tension rings. The ring structure provides more eyelets to facilitate ring manipulation into the capsular bag. The tensing cord method provides a device of reduced diameter during insertion, enhancing safety. Refinement and further development of instruments and complementary devices are required to take full advantage of this methodology.